Hi, I'm Kate. And I'm Mandy. And this is Love Sober, the podcast for the sober and sober curious. Hi there, and welcome back. Uh, This is episode six. Um, So after us explaining a little bit about our our own sort of journeys with alcohol, um, we're going to get back on to talking about a topic. Uh, So it's a logical step, I think, to now talk about taking those first steps, um, building your uh, sober toolkit and perhaps, you know, making those first connections um, within the sober community. Um, But as always, we're going to start just by asking each other how we are, what's going on. So, Kate, how's things? <laughs> I've just said I'm fed up of hearing myself say I'm really overwhelmed, I'm so busy. But, I, yeah, I've had a couple of weeks where I've been juggling like mad. And I suppose that's just like, oh, being a mum and working and doing all that. And actually, it's, mm. we're about to break up, aren't we, for a holiday? So I'm actually feeling really good about that. I'm like, yay, I'm going to down the tools. Um, I'm going to have a bit of a tech fast. And I'm just going to probably eat quite a lot of chocolate because <laughs> it's Easter. Woohoo! And so, yeah, I've, I've got that almost like Friday feeling, even though it's not Friday. Um, uh, how yeah, about you? Pretty good, actually, yeah. Um, I thought I had a week off which was very nice so I was just like chilling and binge watched the whole uh, series which I felt a little bit guilty about but I actually felt quite good about as well Uh, but then I've just realized that I've got to work all day tomorrow so now all the my list and all the you know things I had to get done um, I haven't done but you know whatever (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm still working on time management (laughs) massive issue um (laughs) <laughs> so <laughs> me too I've that's what I did last week I actually kind of got completely stressed out about how much I had to do so I kind of basically mm. cancelled nearly everything um and rearranged everything but I ended up still feeling as stressed I don't know why it was just that I, it was like I'd already done, the damage had already been done and I'd already kind of got really overwrought about it. So even taking it off my list. So that yeah. kind of was a bit rubbish, really. So I'm going to have to have I, a little I think bit it's of like the list of then, And yeah. then you need to divide the list, don't you? It's like, okay, what what do I absolutely have to do to keep things sort of rolling? And then it's like the other mm. things, they can, they can be put aside. And like there's going to be no huge drama if it doesn't get done. You know? They're kind of extras, aren't they? Um, yeah okay so yeah. um taking the first steps uh what what to expect um kate at the beginning you... yeah so i so i suppose right at the, taking it right back to the start i was thinking actually obviously it starts before you stop drinking but imagine that kind of that what you've decided that there's a problem and that you've decided that it's enough of a problem that you're going to go for it and this is the day this is going to be day one and I was just thinking about the feelings and I and I think even though that you know it can be really exciting you'd be like full of motivation and be like right this is it there's probably I mean I know for me there was it it was sort of mixed with quite a lot of fear as well it was fear of kind of failure, like, oh, I've said this so many times or, you know, whatever. Or, or just kind of going, no, it really has to be this time. So I think whatever is going on, it's going to, mm. it can feel really intense. And I just was thinking about none of that is going to mean that you fail or you succeed, actually. So don't kind of worry try not to worry too much about all of the overwhelming feelings or or, you know it will sort of as you go through as you clock up your days and you learn the skills and how to kind of deal with all the stuff we're going to be talking about like the triggers and the key times throughout the day and what's physically going on that that it's just like putting that foot in front one foot in front of the other and putting each day in front of the other and gradually gradually learning that is what that mm. is what gets people sober in my and that's what keeps us going on and on and on so don't i was going to say with all of the feelings feelings are not facts and they will not they won't determine whether that you know whether you're a failure or a success at this so 
You yeah, know, I think um, that, that, that's one of the say. phrases which I think does come from AA actually, which is the O D A A T, which people hashtag on Instagram. It took me a moment to understand what what that was, but uh, that stands for one day at a time, and it's like just take, you know, and uh, yeah, yeah, um, and don't try and fast forward your brain, which <clears> you will, you know, it's just completely normal. Try and fast forward your brain like six months, but how? you know, how can I be sober for the rest of my life? Kind of, you know, that sounds so intimidating and so mm. terrifying. It's just like, yeah, as you say, just put one step uh, in front of, of the other. Uh, I just wanted mm. to say in terms of things that I didn't expect, but, but which happened to me was the kind of physical uh, detox. Um, because I think once you've kind of built up that excitement of like right that's it you know I'm gonna do this you know I'm gonna crack this and you you found that kind of inner strength uh you expect it to be wonderful and then actually especially the first month is actually pretty tough physically um and depending on how much you're mm -hmm. drinking I guess uh, it will depend on on how tough it is but from what I've read and um certainly my experiences of stopping um a few times um, is that I got really bad headaches uh, I basically felt hung over for about three weeks which really sucks because you're like you know I'm stopping drinking so I don't feel like this and now I feel like it so just you know uh, expect that that probably will happen and your sleep uh, will be affected but none of this is long term this is really kind of short term um, physical effects it's like mm. anything you know when you're you're changing a habit or taking something out of your your body it will have like a, a physical effect um, but I think there are things you know you can do in terms of uh, nutrition eating well taking B vitamins me personally I take magnesium in the morning and I take melatonin at night and um, they're both natural um, kind of uh, things that can help you balance your kind of um, the chemicals in your brain um, so yeah just try to sort of um, we're going to talk about this in a minute but try and build yourself like um, a self-care uh, sober toolkit to look after yourself uh, essentially mm. yeah I didn't have um, headaches but I what it really really surprised me on about I remember blogging on day five <clears throat> and I'd gone into town and I had a kind of like almost like a hyperglycemic kind of attack and I felt very very wobbly suddenly very panicky very shaky and I was thinking that's just really bizarre you know what what is all of that and then and I blogged about it and I realized that I hadn't had breakfast I was really thirsty I needed the toilet and this was one of like my big like learning shifts that I basically used to wave away all of the red flags and just mm. keep going and I used to sprint and then I'd sprint and crash and I was doing that and um, so what I did is I stopped and I had an orange juice and I very rarely drank fruit juices because I was always like oh I don't like sugar you know it's just I mm. just drink a vat of wine you know but oh no sure. I never eat chocolate and um so I stopped and had an orange juice they're hydrated and got an immediate sugar and that was fine but it really shook me up and I, so I remember mm. that just those so it could be you know like those headaches or it could then lead on to the other thing that we were going to talk about um which is you know managing that self-care and one of the um probably the most basic I think this might come from AA as well which is hungry angry lonely tired the hold mm. so that would be for me hungry and tired and not really being mindful or being aware of what was going on for myself physically yeah I think that comes a lot from you know from years and years of having one solution for you know stress triggers which was like you know to to, to drink that that's what you do is like you know happy sad tired whatever and yeah. um and certainly um you know when you take that out and you stop n numbing your responses to things <clears throat> that that has an effect not not only when you know in the evening when you would be drinking but has an effect all day long and mm -hmm. it's like learning i guess you know in an infantile state who you used to be and how you react to things which you've kind of pushed 
away for so long and that whole thing hungry angry lonely tired you know that's so good and really really interesting because there's so many moments it's just like why am I feeling like this you know where do I need to go to fix this issue mm. uh, which is not numbing it with a glass of wine it's like what's the matter with me right yeah. now yeah how do um, I make myself feel better yeah in a positive not- way yeah. in a positive way yeah and um certainly you know me a lot of my drinking was because I was lonely uh, a lot was because I was well all of it you know to be honest apart from hungry like I've you know always um, ate quite well but uh you know there was a lot of anger about my past there was a lot of um feeling lonely and um, a lot of being absolutely knackered mm. as a parent so um yeah just stop mm, for a moment too. and and mm. you know and let it let it pass as well you know it's like just let that time go it's like okay sit with it like what's going on what Mm. do I need to do um and I think you were going to talk about that in terms of um distraction which is Mm. the key kind of yeah I was going to say a couple of things with that that but that I mean I'd say the first point of course so if you've you you know you might have heard the word triggers coming up um throughout throughout the day so triggers are when you are reacting to something and it makes you have that thought oh my god I really want a drink so that when we talk about triggers that's what we're talking about is like I want to drink yeah and um so I would say the first thing to do if you get that thought I would always say drink a glass of water because you might be dehydrated I would say eat uh, ASAP absolutely just eat you can't I can't believe how much the physical side of the triggers informing the brain um sorts itself out if you have something and for me in the early days it was kind of sugar uh, or like a piece of cake or something that had um I suppose something a bit comforting but generally it would have sugar in it and and I think that sort of we can go into that in more detail and we've said obviously it's not good to just kind of eat 25 packet of Haribo but the sugar does um work on the same centers in the brain in the dopamine Mm. response so actually it will help those very early days i would say don't worry about that don't bloody worry about a bit of cake or a bag of haribo have it because that is going to really help with those neural pathways with that immediate dopamine response saying i need that reward i need that glass of wine and that's what you're trying to just not do in the very early days so yeah i was just thinking back actually uh, you know saying that it wasn't to do with food or being hungry but that's completely not true because uh, i can remember the first um therapist that I went to see who I only saw once it was the only person I could find that spoke English and I basically just went in and like cried my eyes out for an hour and probably two hours actually and she was like you're in you know burnout and I was like okay and then I had to go to my doctor because she couldn't help me anymore but anyway she we were talking about my kind of day and she said to me you know you need to take at least two hours for yourself in the week and I was like that kind of laughed in her face was like that's impossible like I don't have time for myself and also we were talking about my night routine and she and um and I was saying and this happens and this happens and then I have to feed the kids and then this happens and she was like well when when do you eat and I was like well I eat when the kids have gone to bed um because I want that time for myself to like mm. unwind and she was like so you don't eat from getting back from work at five o'clock until mm. nine o'clock and mm. I was like I was like no and she was like well not even like a bit of bread and I was like no because I was so obsessed with like not putting on weight and not mm. like you know and I was probably you know really not in a good physical state at all and I was so obsessed about not yeah not having carbs <laughs> <laughs> that I wouldn't eat and then you know by that time I'd be like oh well I'm just mm. not going to eat because it's too late and like you know I can't be bothered and I'm so tired I couldn't be bothered to cook so I'd just sit down and, and have a glass of wine and mm. sometimes not eat at all and mm. like literally have wine and and, and that would be my calories um, yeah so yeah hungry is actually really <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And and I think those just mine was sort of more being just mindful. And I definitely starved myself so that I could drink wine and I put my calories there. So there's a real I think there's a real gender thing going on with that with us girls. Um mm. lonely too, because my husband was working until we'd get back about eleven thirty at night from work, working late shifts on the paper. 
and tired. I hate being tired. Tired is my least favourite feeling because tired makes me feel anxious. Mm. And I just feel like, and I, I couldn't work out why actually. And it's really ironic. It's just sort of a bit of a digression, but you know, like when I was, when I drank, it used to wreck my sleep so much, like for the last few years. And I would feel so tired like all day and I hated it I hated it so much because you know mm. um so all of those I I really recognize and you said something about the distraction so another thing you can do as well as look after hungry angry lonely tired is it goes back to the addictive voice recognition and the wine witch so in these early days I think it's fair to see that, say that the wine witch is going to be hollering quite a lot at various times of the day and she might be quiet in the morning and then start up about lunchtime. She'd start up about lunchtime with me. Ooh, you know, to always look at the sun's out. Ooh, that'd be nice to have a shandy, blah, blah, blah. And then before you know it, I wasn't really mindful of that voice, but then it would build up and up and up and then it's hollering, bit of stress, tea time, kids arguing, and I'd just be like, oh my God, I'm literally, it's screaming now, it's screaming so loud. And I was it's really interesting isn't it so so with the addictive voice recognition it's like just recognize that that is the addictive voice just yeah. the one that says i want wine and just try and relax uh distract so you know it could be go and have a bath if you ha you know if you ha have the freedom go for a run or go and watch telly uh eat something just go and do something different until it passes because it does pass yeah. And that was a total revelation. That was like a power block for me. I was like, wowzers. I think we might have said this before, um, you know, that by seven o'clock or eight o'clock, I'm not feeling the same as I was at five. So it's like, okay, distract, n trust that it will go away or quieten down. Mm. And it really will. So literally just sometimes it's just that about, because, you know, we talked about the forever, the fear of forever. Of course, that's like a scary concept. Because in the early days, sometimes it's literally getting through the minutes of intense trigger times, I think. And then the hours, and then it's the days, and then it's, you know. I And I remember kind of months on just thinking, I I mean, I have I don't think about it now. Like, often, no, like, I I'll have days when I literally don't think about wine. I just... Or maybe we do because we're doing a podcast or I'm writing a blog about it or I'm working with someone. But it's not in that same, the wine witch, the addictive voice has spoken to me. It just hasn't. So that's it's insane to think that in the early days. You think, how is that ever possible? But it is, and that's just clocking up the days, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what's quite nice about sort of having a, a blog or writing, you know, having a journal or whatever, because then you can look back and sort of go, because to be honest, I, I'm finding it hard to reach that moment of kind of desperate, like nail biting, get through it. But I, you know, I absolutely definitely did that and I mm. didn't always succeed. And then it'd be like, okay, back to day one and here we go again. And I yeah. can't believe I did that, blah, 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 blah. And that went on for a good couple of years. So yeah uh, I, I definitely definitely went through that but yeah I mean now I, I sometimes look at people that are drinking and, and find it quite sort of surprising it's like oh why do you want to drink why mm. why is that like a good idea now but like it just doesn't occur mm. to me to to do that it's very very specific situations mm. um where I just and you know now it's just quite you know I can analyze it and go oh that's interesting like I went for a, a walk the other day with my son and we had like a really really nice time but it was quite cold and kind of wintry and we sort of and then we went and had like um we had a cake and a cup of tea and I was just like oh this is so nice and then I was like oh I'd love to have a glass of wine when I get home and it was like you know Ooh. in front of the where in did front that of come the from? <laughs> in front of the fire and, you know, all snugly under a blanket. And it was like, yeah. well, I don't even have a fire, so I can't, can't do that. <laughs> yeah. But it was just like, yeah. you know, I had this kind of image in my head of this romantic idea of having a glass of wine. And now I can kind of like go, like, weird, that's, and, and mm. throw it away quite easily. Um, and it's, yeah, I guess that kind of imagery is... is yeah, uh, I think the romanticising 
around it yeah. um, is really, and that's a really good point. That's really common, isn't it? It's almost like it's quite fil it was fi quite filmic for me. So there's lots of mm. associations. So it's not just a glass of wine. It's a glass of wine in a setting with a feeling and with stuff attached yeah. to it. And it's all of that. It's really, really interesting. And um, I yeah. think slowly, slowly those associations, it's like breaking connections, cutting strings, you know, but it takes, yeah. takes a while, doesn't it? And just to know that it's, that's the addictive voice playing the, that yeah. favourite film of whatever it is to sell you a, a little glass of wine there, a cheeky one, which will end up being more and end up making you feel awful. And so yeah. it, it's just sort of not believing it, isn't it? It's like... Yeah, you know, and it's you being have able to, be quite... to, to to fast forward as well yeah. and go, yeah, yeah, that's it's like understanding it. that it's a trick and it's yeah. it is you know that's the addictive voice. Mm. It's like no, that's a trick because you know if I if I do that then this will happen, then this will happen, then yeah. this will happen, mm. uh, and and I don't want any of that that comes after it. So I'm not doing, uh, you know, it's a lie yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, um, well, you talked about as well, like kind of having this self-care, um, sort of a, a, a little package, a self-care toolkit. And I, and I think that, I, I mean, I sort of, I remember, I can't remember where I read it, but it was about a, a woman saying that she approached the first three months. It's almost like, um, like when you're pregnant, where you just go, I'm not going to, like, yeah, I'm not going to run a marathon if I'm newly pregnant, am I? I'm not going to climb Mount Everest if I've got morning sickness. And it was like, just let yourself off the hook. Prioritise this and, you know, sleep when you want, you know, as, as much as you can. Obviously, we have real life restrictions on us. As much as you can, rest, eat what you want, eat what you fancy and have it be try and be mindful of it making you feel good but not trying to I mean I remember I just was like right I'm perfect and shiny and happy and I've got to be happy all the time and now I've got to sort of I need to sort this out and that out and it's like no call off the hunt like just let yourself off the hook like this is going to be there's going to be lots of stuff shifting around possibly but for most of us, I think that that happens. And to, I would say, like, be curious and let yourself off the hook as much as possible and just, you know, don't, you don't have to go to that party. You said that, you know, it's not going to be forever. Yeah. Don't kind of go, oh, right, okay, I really can't cope with going to that party tonight. That means my social life is over and I'm always just going to be this lonely person. No, you're not. You're going to feel really different in three months' time. So yeah, don't yeah, yeah. freak out. Just, like, allow this to be the thing just for you know how long would you say i mean i think three months was probably a good amount yeah, of time for me yeah. to just start feeling a little bit more like baby steps were starting to be over and i was starting to toddle a bit yeah i don't know yeah yeah definitely um i think this it, and i think that's why the danger of kind of dry january isn't it is that mm. like i think that's why people are, even alcohol kind of um awareness uh, charities and stuff are trying to push it out to at least like 90 days because mm. well a you change habits in that time and also uh, it gives you enough time to sort of get all the messy first months out of the way and then start mm. to feel a bit better but i'd say um yeah i mean i'd say give yourself six months to mm. get yourself like back you know into really feeling good about socializing and stuff mm. and also just think okay well this you know things are going to change but that's okay and like mm. you know i'm finally becoming <laughs> finally becoming an adult quite like it <laughs> like someone sort of said to me oh but you know i get so tired by like half 10 i just kind of want to go home and it's like well that's fine you know mm. you're in your 40s you've got a full-time job you've got two kids it's like you know if you're knackered and you want to go home at half mm. 10 then that's fine and you know I always say like I, I I'm absolutely happy to sort of have lunch or brunch with people mm. but it's actually very rare that I do want to stay up till three in the morning I just mm. it doesn't fit with my life now and you know and I had a good innings of being like mm. a party girl but I'm I'm kind of done you know mm. and yeah I get those moments where I want to go and go dancing and 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 I can do all that stuff but it, it's not like a week in week out thing it just doesn't fit with with what yeah my priorities you know yeah. my priorities is being a good mum and 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 having a good job which I you know 
slightly struggling with at the moment but you know and making sort of a pathway for myself mm. for the future and for me and my husband to be able to have a nice life when the kids are gone and you know creating things for the next stage it's like what's the next stage of my life right it'll be my 40s my 50s what do I want to be doing then it's like I don't want to be hung over mm. and feeling miserable I want to be like you know, doing yoga and traveling and mm. eating really nice food. And this thing about food, I was thinking about it yesterday, it's like, I absolutely love food. Mm -hmm. You know, I get so excited about like lunching. It's like, mm. you know, whenever I make a plan with any friend, it's, you know, I was making a plan for to take my mum out for her birthday. It's like, okay, where do you want to go? As long as they've got a nice like cafe, it's mm -hmm. fine with me. Because that's, that's what brings me pleasure. Like I really enjoy having mm. a nice lunch and a piece of cake. And and I was suppressing all that mm. for yeah. drinking alcohol. <laughs> and I, I, I think that dark. sort of, you know, you get clearer on note that as you go along, don't you? But I, And I mm. think that, you know, that is a lovely thing. You can reframe socialising and, you know, our connections. You can have really great, meaningful, sober conversations with people over brunch rather than a conversation you don't remember so it's like you don't I know we've come to see socializing as like one thing but actually it can mm. be you can connect in all all sorts of ways yeah I think that's really important I think sort of those so those early days of just reaching out and getting support and being able to kind of work it all through with people so places like Soberistas or Club Soda where well, you've met loads of people on Instagram haven't you or oh, I've yeah. remembered what I was I was going to say, for me, that sort of mix of sort of self-care, but also being quite strict. So like a good parent, almost, I don't know. So like, okay, mm. I'm not going to engage with the wine, which I'm not going to give that airtime, but I'm going to be really like looking after myself in other areas and sort of gently. Mm. So, um, you know, uh, like if I remember Rebecca Weller of, of Sexy Sobriety saying, if it's not a hell yeah, it's a hell no. You know, you don't have to shoehorn yourself. So that sort of, that was probably my personal little uh, mix that I, I, I had to find my, my balance with, which was like, what areas am I really strict on and what areas am I going to just be really soft about? And I had to be like really clear about the alcohol. That's that's black and white. That's a grey area. That's a shut door, and I'm not going there. The rest is like let's just kind of start to see what feels good. Let's start to do you know what I mean? So this is this mm. this sort of exploration of yourself. I don't know if that makes sense. So um, in terms of uh, the toolkit, because uh, we talk about this mm. toolkit, but you know people might not know what it is. I mean, it can be as physical of literally sort of sorting out your house and sorting out your cupboards to mm. have you know things to go to when you, when you trigger or when you're not feeling good you know it could be like lavender oil or getting yourself a diffuser of um of um, essential oils it could be um we have a good friend um kim pseudonym cop on soberistas that um invented the genius thing which we'll have to get her on to talk about in more detail which is the disco bath so she literally like her thing was that she got sort of she was you know rave lights disco ball in her bathroom colored lights she'd go in there you know and pump out like hardcore kind of <laughs> techno and have yeah. a disco bath and that was like she literally like hammer herself through that thing of just like do, 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 you know with the lights and everything <laughs> just to kind of like you know get her through that 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 trigger time you know and I love those sort of things of like pushing it's like again going back to what makes you happy as a kid mm. you know it's like is it drawing and getting into coloring mandalas or is it you know going horse riding or I mean mm. I was on the beach with my daughter on um on Sunday and it was about uh I don't know what time it was, about one o'clock. So a lot of people would have been in having lunch and having some wine. And there was these three people that were galloping across the oh, beach amazing. on horses. And I was just like, that, like, that's what mm. this is about. It's like taking joy of pure things uh, rather than, you know, just like getting pissed. Mm. I mean, isn't there better things to do with your time? Mm. And for me, that was really hard at the beginning because I had no hobbies. Like yeah. I don't, I didn't do anything from, you know, I gave up dancing. I used to do contemporary dance, which I gave up when I was like 15. And from that point on, my pure hobby was 
like partying and socializing and getting pissed like i i don't you know i don't do any sport i don't like do any craft i'm not mm. you know i like art but i'm not particularly good at it so it's like when i took that out which was like what am i gonna do with my time so yeah like i binge watch a lot of tv but you know and at the same for me is that's a long-term thing for me being okay when my kids leave too it's like I need to mm, find, stuff find the things that you love. Do with my time, yeah, you know. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to be completely lost. And when mm. you've got all this dead time, when you don't know what to do with yourself, then <clears> you know, part of filling that is is just, drinking. Mm. It's just like, it's and that's you get and, so you know, much time back when you stop drinking. I think this is a brilliant part, but it's a challenge as well. And I think that um, there's two things. Like the childhood hobbies is a good place to start doing a bucket list again i think that this starts to kind of emerge slightly down the line a little bit it's yeah, not just getting true. through mm. the but but definitely by i suppose about a couple of months two to three months i was thinking okay what now what do i need and and those i i would say as well just before i forget again um sober treats i think these mm. are so so vital because um this self-care, I think there's a bit of a confusion about it, about some people just think it's a massage or some people are like, what is it? It's a bit fluffy. I think self-care is whatever you need and whatever sort of is making you feel good. And that could be like a lavender oil, like you were saying. It could be a massage. It could be doing a mindfulness course. It could be, you know, it can be sort of a bit deeper than that. And, and I think that you kind of can get to grips with that. But what it does, like for me, I started with just like and this is really embarrassing, like buying some post-its. <laughs> so like that was like, because I really like stationery, so I buy myself a post-it and, and, and it just sort of cheered me up. Or it's things are like little things that cheer you up. And, um, you know, again, you're rewiring your reward system away from the glass of wine will cheer me up. I'm sorry, it's mm. not a crime if I buy post-its and they cheer me up. It doesn't mean I'm addicted to post-its. It just means that I kind of like they cheer me up, right? So, yeah. and like little things like that. And um, and I and my a very very wise friend of mine said, she said yeah because she bought a lipstick and she said sometimes it's outside in and sometimes it's inside out. And so sometimes if we are a kind of come on, sometimes we come to this journey absolutely feeling broken, and we mm. haven't got that inside out work sorted out so sometimes yeah. buying a new lipstick having your hair done buying a post-it you are like starting to put things in and it's coming outside in for you yeah, and actually what i found is then that generated this feeling feeling better and a much deeper com much more sort of you know spiritual deeper conversation happened but a lot later on um, yeah, yeah, so yeah. you know sober treats one a day go and treat yourself put your feet up have a nice cup buy a nice mug to have your lovely hot chocolate in you know what I mean just yeah. like wowzers, like posh tea. Posh I, love I love going to the tea shop like it's just that thing because when you stop drinking it's that kind of rom as we talked about that romanticism especially for me I live in France you know my husband has a wine cellar like we have these amazing fine wines that are, you know, 10, 15 years old. They're really expensive. They do taste beautiful. Like, I can't deny that. I mean, now I can't get the taste. I can't imagine the taste for me. It's like vinegary. But mm -hmm. um, but I go to a posh tea shop. You know, there's one in my town and there's like a wall of tea, you know, loose tea. And it's amazing. Like, I get the same buzz of like going, oh, what mm. shall I have? And, oh, you know, I have that one. Oh, maybe have a bit sort of um, a bit smoky tea or, you know, and the, and the way that they prepare it with a little pot and, mm. you know, and clearly a homemade cake at the same time. But, um, yeah, I mean, those, those things are like proper treats for me. Mm. And when you can have a piece of cake and a cup of tea guilt free, that's really mm. great and that's something yeah. I can share with my kids you know it's like it's not me doing something that's secretive and, and separate from them it's like a family mm. tree yeah and then that ticks all the social and family boxes as well and I, and I think like you know I'm, and in the early days I probably wouldn't have got that I'd have just gone oh no oh you know yeah right a cup of tea and a cake like that's no use to man nor beast but as you go on and your brain rewires and your i feel like you 
I think I get pleased by much simpler things and real things. Mm. So once the addiction is, or whatever you want to call it, the problematic, the relationship is dying away, mm. those other things do satisfy you. So even though you think, oh, that's just, yeah, but that's not bloody gin and tonic, is it? It's like, mm. well, uh, no, I know it doesn't feel like that now, but it will. Like, it will. Yeah. And you'll find those things to float your boat. And part of that is that addiction kind of you know dying away and the and the brain recalibrating and yeah i the, guess that's you know yeah it's uh we're running out of time but i guess that's a good place to start isn't it is you know when you are in that distraught kind of beginning period and it all seems quite kind of grim and unachievable and and hard um you know there's some great books now like you know Catherine gray's book the unexpected mm. joy of being sober is is great if you're starting out um to kind of um see the positive side to it but it's also yeah write yourself as you said like a, when you said bucket list I got all like mm. oh excited it's like <laughs> oh you know like what what possibilities are out there for mm. me you know like what do I what do I want like I'm making a choice which is gonna affect the rest of mm. you know my life or next week or you know whatever um, and yeah what what else what are the things that bring mm. me joy which isn't booze so you've got booze on one side that's just one thing mm. like drink drinking alcohol is one thing on one side of the list and then list all the other things that mm. you like or bring you joy or make you happy or bring you satisfaction and if you keep looking at that list go right one mm. thing or all of this one yeah. thing all of this you know yeah, yeah that's be right. very very helpful to kind of go right yeah and then and then do them because i think that's the other thing like this is about doing isn't it like being sober is about doing every day like mm. you you just put one foot in front of the other and then you've got you've got a day sober and it, and so you know if you've got your bucket list kind of go and do some of them you know why not mm. like and then see how they feel and you might be like actually you know what i really don't like horse riding anymore or I feel yeah. too much of a knob tap dancing. Do you know what? I'll <laughs> never feel like that. But <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, but you might, but so what? So, you know, I know that just really quickly, I know that one of the feelings that I had when I first stopped drinking was suddenly a feeling of possibility. That mm. I, I felt like this trajectory of predictability. Like, I know what's going to happen if I drink a bottle of wine. Or oh, sometimes I don't, and that's even more scary. But generally, yeah. I just know that outcome. I'd know the outcome and all I can see is this this bloody path right all the way until hopefully old age and the grave you know what I mean it was like oh god that's so predictable what does sober look like I don't know that I don't know mm. where that can take me and I can't believe where the people that I've met um and, and yeah. what 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 it's like so you know there's there's that as well that kind of just I think part of the tool, if, if someone, I don't know if anyone had said that specifically to me, but I know that like being part of the sober community and just seeing people further on going, it, it's fine, it'll get better. That's one of the yeah. really important toolkitty bits about being in a sober community because you see people have gone, no, don't worry, I've been there. I know what it's like. Yes, yada, yada, I know all of that. What you're talking about, I get it, but look yeah, how it, yeah, look how it can look. So. So should we quickly recap the toolkit before we sign off? We've said yeah. being halt, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Trigger yeah. times during the day to play it forward. We've said sober treats, haven't we? Yeah. And like a bucket list kind of thing. And we've said linking with the sober community. Can you think of anything else? Um, and just um, look after yourself in terms of nutrition, like try and eat yeah. well, try and um, sleep, try and, you know, look after your body because you, you are going through a physical um, change as well. Mm. So, Do you think you need a box set as well? I know I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, if Netflix, Netflix Something to existed do. the first time I tried to get sober, you know, like... <laughs> it would have been different. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're going to finish just with, um, well, I think that's our tip, isn't it? We've done the tip in terms of um, the list of uh, things to help you. Yeah. So what's your um, reason to love sober today? My reason to love sober, I think it's, things have been very, very uh, complicated lately. And I'm so glad I don't have the complication of drinking. 
it's just mm. simple that's like one thing in my life that doesn't take up the headspace of any kind of of discussion so it's uh, my reason to love sober is the simplicity of alcohol free living the greatest simplicity mm. for me how about you um i think uh my reason to love sober is um is connection i think uh, i've had a few nice messages today that like certain people that i've been chatting to who are kind of turning a corner or doing well and um i think i've realized that there is kind of um within the sober community quite a lot of sort of ultra sensitive people like me you know caregivers that you know people that that care a lot about others and i think having that reciprocal kind of uh, relationship with people and and being able to support people gives me a lot of um contentment and, and happiness um to know that i'm kind of doing a bit of good um really sort of helps and and makes me feel good so you know i i, I like that very much i like having that connection mm. with people so mm, um lovely. obviously it can be hard when when things are, are difficult um but we'll, you know, perhaps talk about that mm. in a further episode of, you know, when you're interacting with a, mm, a community. Um, but yeah, today, you know, I feel good that I can, people can reach out to me and I can reach out to others and, mm. and have a conversation without judgment, I think is, is yeah, right. it's, you know, mm. spectacularly brilliant, really. So mm. there we go. Okay. So, um, if you're concerned about your drinking immediately, um, you can visit drinkaware.co.uk or talk to your GP. Um, and in the meantime, uh, we hope you have a lovely week and we'll see you next week for some more chat about something else.